And what hurdles have you had to overcome with your actual coaching? As a, as a new coach, at the, you know, at a young age, 17, 18, coaching adults was quite scary. Um, I always remember that, you know, going on to coaching the, the young children, I was loving it. You know, I was a big boy compared to them and it was I kind of I was showing off what I, what I knew and, and I felt really confident in that arena. But coaching adults was just scary. And, and it wasn't because, you know, I, I was a, a good tennis player and, and some the adults that I was coaching were beginners and, and didn't know half as much as I did about tennis. But it was scary just speaking to adults. You know, it, it was something I wasn't used to. And, and everything in life that I do with my coaching and everything else, I try and take myself out of my comfort zone as much as possible. And it's the only way that you can progress, basically. So, yeah, it was scary coaching adults. I did it more and more. And eventually you know it took me six months to kind of get used to it and and actually enjoy it and now I love it you know I, I I absolutely love coaching adults because the thing about coaching adults is they are they're coming to your sessions and they are choosing to come to your sessions and they are paying to come to your sessions because they like the session and you know that so you know with sometimes with children the parents are uh, choosing for the children to come along and so you're you kind of don't always um know if it's really their choice you know you see smiles on their faces and you know that they're enjoying it but for adults they're making that conscious decision to play so it's nice to to be able to give enjoyment to to adults as well as juniors and um, was it really just a case of okay i'll suck it up i've got to coach a, a load of adults right now or was there something you think you consciously said well i need to do a little bit differently to engage with them a bit better or yeah I think I learned, so I, I had um, the coach that I used, I was an assistant coach on the adult program to start off with. And the coach that ran the session was, was very good at having a laugh with the adults. Um, and so as I grew in confidence, I, you know, I started to have a bit of a joke around with the adults as well. And, and that straight away kind of eased my, eased my worries and, and gave me a lot more confidence. So, you know, as soon as you can be on that level with the adults and have a bit of a laugh, you feel like, right, you've got, you've got, that connection now um and so i I, you know still to this day i really try and have a a good laugh with the with the players to make sure that you know everybody's comfortable um communication wise i think as well hitting and doing the demonstrations was a good way for me to gain the adults respect because they could see that i was a good player yeah um so so the coach i was working with quite often got me to demonstrate which was a good way good thing thing for me because because i could hit the ball well they would see that and be quite impressed and actually listen to me a bit more when I gave them feedback. Um, so yeah, I think for a, a good player or a, and a young coach, if you want to coach adults, hit balls with them as much as possible. And that instantly kind of gains their respect. And what are you trying to improve with your coaching now? Becoming even more simple. I think, you know, you touched on it earlier, but, but kind of really becoming efficient with the way that I coach. So making demonstrations efficient you know cutting out all of the the unnecessary content and just refining it to what the player needs because the less information that you give across the easier it is for them to to bring into their game so i'm always working on trying to to simplify my approach and you know with with the kids there are there are lots of ways that you can develop let's say the forehand technique but without even saying a word um a, a very simple way is holding a football and getting the child to throw the football from their hip over the net and what that does it encourages a unit turn it encourages getting your left arm across your body and it does all the right things biomechanically without mentioning a single word just get them to throw the ball Um, to get a player to improve their serve technique just get them to throw over arm because it's exactly the same motion so you know there, there are some basic ways of simplifying things but it's across the board in general, I think for me, I just want to be even more simple and even more precise and efficient with the way that I coach. And have you learnt, or where have you learnt about this uh, simplicity of explanation helping biomechanics? Where have you learned that from? Um, so the LTA have got a good uh, lawn tennis association. They've got a good system for coaches where um, coaches that want to be accredited need to collect fifteen. Um, credits or license points throughout a year to be able to get your accreditation 
and each of the credits it equates to about an hour of CPD. And so the LTA provide um, various courses which you can choose and go on. They might be online course, they might be face to face. Um, so going on those every year, keeping myself fresh with with new content really really helps. Um, but also working with lots of different coaches. I think it's important for any young coach to spend lots of time with different coaches with different styles so that you can develop your own style. Um, you know, there are lots of coaches out there that have coached at one club for the whole of their life. And, and, you know, it's nice for them to have that feeling of being, you know, loyal to that club. But at the same time, you're not going to be learning as much from seeing one coach um, as opposed to seeing lots of different coaches. So for me, it's, yes, yeah, spending time with lots of other coaches, seeing things being, do, being done well and seeing things being done not so well has helped me to shape the way that I coach. But yeah, lots of training course, spending lots of time with other coaches which isn't developing my own through that. So is that one of the key pieces of advice you would give somebody coming into tennis or any other coach, uh, any, to coach any other sport? is um, go and watch other coaches doing what they do and, and finding out whether it's good or bad or indifferent. Def- definitely spending time with other coaches. But I would also say, if you can, video one of your coaching sessions and watch it back because you will be able to coach yourself you know, um, I've seen myself coach and I, I hated it because um, I would always, um, I'd be erming a lot like I am now. So I'd be going, um, 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 I'd hear myself during demonstrations using the same phrase over and over again. So I'd cut, try and cut that out. I'd be, you'd, you'd hear yourself trying to talk too much. So if you, if you can see yourself in action, that's the best way to give yourself feedback and to try to improve it or have a friend or you know a peer or one of your colleagues watching you too um feeding back is is a good way to develop and as you recording your youtube videos helped with that do you think or i think it has yeah because um i see myself messing up a lot i see myself um repeating myself a lot um so yeah i think it has what other piece of advice would you give to a new coach coming into coach a sport I would say look after your body. So I think I mentioned in one of your other um, podcasts that it's um, being a coach of any sport is, is physical and, and people when they get into it as youngsters don't realize um, that us oldies start to feel the pain. Speak and yourself, when oldie. You, you get into it, <laughs> um, when you get into, when you get into coaching and you're, you're 17, 18, 19 years old, your body can be put through, you know, hours on court you you can work seven days a week and not really feel it physically but i'm you know i'm starting to feel aches and pains and getting little injuries and and, and that sort of thing so making sure that you 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 know inevitably uh, as a young coach you're probably going to want to do as many hours you, as you can you're probably going to work six seven days a week and, and that's fine as long as you look after your body so you know being flexible and mobile is key I, i've spent some time recently improving my flexibility and mobility just through um, doing kind of mini yoga sessions from from a YouTube video at home, um, doing going to the gym and working on strength so that longer term I can stay in in coaching, because I, I you know there is a fear that if you get injured as a as a coach, that's your livelihood gone, um, unless you do loads of online stuff, um, you know like developing courses online and that sort of thing. So for me, I'm just trying to make my career span last longer through being mobile, being able to get around the court and, and having longevity. Yeah. So that's another tip I would say. Yeah. I thought that uh, answer you gave for episode four of this podcast, which I will put a, an, a link to in the show notes. I thought your answer was fantastic and it was completely left a field for me. I really thought that that could be an answer for uh, the question that I asked lots of other coaches in that episode, which was what's the one thing you wish you knew before becoming a coach? And I think it's super, super important. In fact, one of my athletes um, after lockdown has started doing a bit of coaching on these uh, learn to row courses that uh, my rowing club runs um, and with some of the improvers. And <laughs> she was complaining to me the other day that her back aches uh, after coaching because sitting in uh, the coaching launch, the coaching motorboat that we use, the obviously the, the steering wheel for it is, is fixed and the seat is fixed and 
they just happen to be like a little bit too far away from one another. So you're always trying to find the right position to sit and steer the boat and make sure that, you know, generally you're coaching a boat, which is alongside. So obviously the steering wheel and the seat are pointing forwards, but the co- boat you're coaching is off to the right hand side in this instance, usually. And how we, how do you twist and steer and do all these different things at the same time? So although, you know, lots of different sports, you know, so you coach tennis and, in order to coach tennis, you have to be on court and you're probably doing quite a lot of it to demonstrate, etc. I do very, very little demonstration as a, as a rowing coach. Thank goodness um, for, for rowing on the water um, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that nowadays. Um, but uh, I think it's really, it's really uh, interesting that coaches have to look after themselves in, in lots of different ways. So I think that's a really great um, Really great answer and thanks for sharing that again.